everyone, and welcome to Transurfing TV. Xavier Watercane. Oh my God. Hello. That was Hello. so weird. How much? How many things passed by in between, or how many things happened in between now and the last time we talked? I can't remember the last time we talked. Oh my God. I know it was a very, very long time ago. Seemingly, I think it was even before COVID. Struck. Wow. All right. Well, let's get to it. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's not get... try to go there. <laughs> yeah, let's please, please. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. That particular pendulum does not don't need any that. more <laughs> attention. <laughs> really. Nobody needs any more of that. Well, welcome to the Trans Surfing Podcast. It's a very general sort of podcast. We just talk for an hour and it's pretty fun. If you haven't seen us talk before, we have some questions from the International Trans Surfing Institute Facebook group that people wanted us to answer here. So we will do that and then we will just kind of uh, run our mouths at each other for about an hour <laughs> talking about trans surfing stuff. And, Hope you uh, hope you enjoy the show. So, cool, Xavier. What have you been doing, man? With everything, I, with your life. Well, well, I've just I'm just putting the finishing touches now on a book uh, on the subject of uh, demonic possession and exorcism. Ooh, I love. So that. I've basically taken um, a year's deep dive into the nature of evil. Oh my gosh. Interesting. Wow. Yes, very. Did you, did, were you able to look at what you were, what you were discovering through the trans surfing filter cell? Well, yes, because that I tend to do that anyway, no matter what situation I'm in. So I observed certain phenomena I looked at the way that certain people were acting under particular circumstances, and I got an understanding, a deeper understanding about the nature of consciousness in general and the way the conscious manifests. Because at the end of the day, what people interpret as demonic position, I conclude to be an incompatibility of consciousness in some cases. And in other cases, I think that the process of undergoing some form of demonic um, affliction is quite similar to that of the way that we encounter disease. Mm -hmm. Again, we, we, our physical bodies exist in a context of an ecology. Our, a physical organism, physical organisms interacting with each other continually. Some organisms are going to be parasitic. Some organisms are going to be predatory. Some organisms are going to be symbiotic. So you're going to have various stages, different levels of cooperation. There are going to be le different levels of interaction, which is more competitive. And there is also a spiritual ecosystem. So demonic what we what people normally call demonic possession, which I've termed in the book affliction, is actually one manifestation of a variety of interactions that can happen within a spiritual ecosystem. Is it safe to say that it's kind of like a pendulum getting inside of you and messing up that ecosystem and essentially taking you over? In a, sense, in a sense, everything is potentially a pendulum in oh, trans surfing terms, right? Because I am a consciousness. I require an interchange of energy. Energy goes in, energy goes out, energy expresses itself. I demand your attention. I might or might not get it. You are the same as, a, as another consciousness. You are yourself another pendulum, but in a broader sense, consciousness exists in infinite forms. And so some consciousness evolved to the point where they 
interact with human consciousness in particular ways and whether or not we filter them through a cultural filter of say an angelic entity or a higher self entity or a positive spiritual entity or whether a negative energy or a negative entity depends a lot about who we are at any point in our lives because we can only manifest what we are resonating with yeah mm -hmm. right so what happens in the cases of spiritual affliction is that people for whatever reason are sending out a signal that is compatible with certain forms of conscious interaction that might or might not lead to positive outcomes so mediumship and possession are actually two sides of a very uh, of the same phenomena in mediumship depending on how far you go you are opening yourself up to being receptive to other consciousness coming in often it's non-physical consciousness allowing that consciousness to interact with your physical being in order to produce a particular result if that if the consciousness that you're communing with is a positive one we tend to call that mediumship or channeling if it's a negative one we tend to call that affliction and possession interesting so so, so it's like having a conversation i can have a conversation with you and we're pals and we can have a really lovely time or i can in fact have a conversation or an interaction with a psychotic a psychotic killer who wants to do nothing more than damage me because that's where they're at. But I can't have that interaction unless there's something inside me allowing that to take place. Otherwise, in simple terms, by my, my vibration and the vibration of that other entity are too incompatible for us to ever interact. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense because it's exactly what, you know, transurfing states about pendulums, right? That a pendulum is only going to hook you if you're resonating at the same frequency of the pendulum. So. Exactly, exactly. And whether the then we're really only just discussing whether the pendulum is an energy that is not conscious in the way that we understand consciousness, or whether it is conscious, a conscious entity that is self-aware and self-governing and autonomous and and has its own freedom of will, as we presume we have. Yeah, that was going to be my question is in in the case of somebody being possessed is that energy consciously trying to do something to the person it can or it can't if it's a the, the, you can have low levels of affliction i prefer to call it spiritual affliction just to make it because possession has a very specific meaning within this context but let's just call it affliction in general Think of it like this. Here's a physical analogy. Afflic general energetic affliction is a little bit like you're being exposed to a poison, like a chemical, say cyanide or something, right? Or drinking cyanide. alcohol or something mm -hmm. like that. Or drinking alcohol or taking Or drinking alcohol, yes. Something to or drinking alcohol to excess or inappropriately, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that uh, that's just chemistry on a, at a physical level. It's an energy condensed into a, into a chemical, but it's still not conscious as we would describe consciousness, okay? Nobody would accuse a glass of alcohol of being conscious usually, right? Yelling it's, at a glass of alcohol, why are you trying to do this to me? Right? It's, just, it, yes. it's just a thing. It's just a, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just it's, it, it, whatever consciousness it has, it's at a very, very low level of consciousness. So it exists, and that what and that's what can happen when people have spooky feelings when they enter a room, mm -hmm. or an object might be cursed or contaminated in some way spiritually. It has taken on an energy that is vibrating in a way that is incompatible with what you are. That makes sense, right? Yes. So if we move up the scale of consciousness, we then say have something like a virus still not very conscious but can do you a lot of harm because it is predated because it is parasitic 
mm-hmm. and predatory, mm-hmm. right? Then you go up to bacterial infections, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Got it. All the way to you have a confrontation with, say, a rabid dog mm-hmm. that yeah. is under the inf- its own influences and its consciousness is completely screwed up and all it wants to do is tear your throat out. All the way to an animal that is conscious and it is aware of itself to some degree, like a shark, that might not deliberately mean you harm, but it yeah. just wants to eat. I mean, no, you can't accuse a shark of being evil. It doesn't have the intention of harming you for the sake of harming you. It has the intention of harming you simply because it wants to eat. The fact that it will kill you in the process is irrelevant to its level of consciousness. Right. And then you have yet another higher level where you have, say, a a psychopathic person who knows, might even be aware that they're crazy, but doesn't care, who actually enjoys sadistically harming you, because that's where that particular entity is at that particular time, right? So you have all these different levels of ways that you can interact at a physical level with things that are incompatible with you. And you have all of these different levels of interacting with things that are non-physical and can interact with you of the same On the other hand, you have the positive aspects of things. You can have chemistry that is healing, uh, particular drugs or plant essences that can cure you of a disease or or at least treat them, you'll treat your symptoms all the way up to go back from, from the, from bacteria that are actually helpful in your, that live in your gut all the time that help you actually process your food and that actually produce vitamins that you can't actually produce yourself. That's a, that's a symbiotic relationship. And then you get up to a higher level, like say, instead of having the rabid dog, you have that pet dog that loves you to pieces and that you have a friendship and a relationship with all the way to friends and then people who you are romantically in love, uh, involved with, who really care about you, all the way up to parents who will, who would conscious, I mean, you and I have the experience of not having had necessarily the greatest parenting, but there are parents in the world. But there are parents in the world that would would put themselves everything. in front of the bus for their children, right? Yeah. So, and as everything. there are all of these possible interactions with people, things, energies at a physical level, there are these interactions that are possible at a psychic and energetic and spiritual level. Okay, so I have a burning question that I have to ask you because something happened to me probably about 10 years ago. Burning question, Renee. It's a good one. Okay. If you've studied this stuff, then maybe you could shed a little bit uh, of of light onto what happened. I've not just studied it at a distance. I've actually observed this and I have observed people interacting, not only the afflicted, but the the deliverer or exorcist attempting to ex, attempting successfully Ooh, often okay. to expunge these. Okay, these so I got to tell you what happened, and I got to get your I got to get your take on it because sure. I've told this story a number of times, and everybody's just like, "Okay, that's really creepy," but yeah. that's all it ever ends up being is just a creepy story. So, probably about ten years ago, I was going through this thing called sleep paralysis. I'm sure yes. you know what it is. Yes. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, it's like the opposite of lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming, you 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 gain consciousness within your dream. You gain, aw- you gain awareness within your awareness. Dream. Awareness. Yes. You are aware that you are dreaming and yet the dream continues. Yes. So sleep paralysis is kind of the opposite. You you wake up with your mind, not all the way, but your body is still asleep. So your body is like, you're paralyzed, just like you're asleep. And what happened for me, my experience of it, which is a lot of people's experience of sleep paralysis, is it's like you're experiencing reality as it is. So if you're laying in your bed, in your bedroom, your eyes are semi-open, and you can see the room exactly as it is because you're actually experiencing it. You're, 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 you're aware enough to experience 
your environment exactly the way it is. You're awake enough. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, there's from a transurfing perspective, like a filter also that's overlaid in between your awareness and your sleep. So it's kind of like you're dreaming, but you're, but you're awake at the same time. And it can be really, really scary because most of the time the human body doesn't like this sensation of being semi awake, but also paralyzed. So the brain goes towards certain scenarios. Lots of times it has to do with ghosts or somebody else in the room, or somebody's going to come and do something to you. And there's like this impending sort of doom. Oh my God, I can't move my body. I'm paralyzed, but you're awake. And it's just utter panic, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. is this kind of what you know of it? So I experienced- your Your question is? No. So, so I had this for like, uh, but what I'm saying is, is that, what, did I explain sleep paralysis as well? Yes, Just you did. Then. Is that you kind did. of you the, did. is that, uh, I think more or less, that's the general version of it. Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the state between sleep and wakefulness is called hypnagogic. That's the side, that's never hip, heard the word. hypnagogic. That is that particular uh, liminal, uh, that is like borderline state between the two states of consciousness. We awake, asleep, but between that, there's hypnagogic, where it's actually a very, very good practice to try staying in that state. Ooh. It's actually a very, very, very good meditative practice to Ooh. be in there. God, I have such, I have such trauma from this time. I would. I understand. So- I, I see. I understand. So tell, me about the trauma- tell me about the traumatic experience, and let's see if we can get okay. into okay. some insight about this. Okay, so. I'm having these sleep paralysis experiences and they're always involving some kind of entity that's in the corner of my room and Mm -hmm. it's moving around and it's floating closer to me. And I don't really, it doesn't have a face. It doesn't have necessarily a, there's, there's no, I just know that there's this energy and it's in the corner of the room and it won't leave and I'm panicking and I'm tripping out and I'm trying to yell, you know, I'm doing that thing where I'm trying to yell to wake myself up and I'm like, wake up, wake up, wake up. So it's not happening. what'd you say? But it's not happening. But it's not happening. It was hor- It was really horrifying. So, so in this particular situation, boyfriend at the time, we're asleep. It's middle of the night, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. This thing starts happening and I'm tripping out. I'm going through the whole thing and I manage to wake myself up. So I yeah. wake myself up. I sit up in the bed. I look over at my boyfriend who's dead asleep. He's on his back, but his arms are sticking straight up in the air. Right. So he's on his back and his arms are just straight up in the air and he's asleep. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, wake up, wake up. Why are you doing that with your arms? And he was like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. And he's actually talking to me with his arms sticking straight up in the air. And finally he put his arms down and I said, why were you doing that? Why were you putting your arms up in the air? He said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. So my interpretation of what went on was that there, there was actually some kind of energy in the room and that energy went into him for some reason. And that's why his arms were sticking up. But I have no, I have no, I have like no information to try to, this is just my intuitive sense of what happened, but it's always really intrigued me of what happened that night. Okay. Let me tell you from what I, from my point of view, based upon a year of my life being, taking a deep dive into the nature of these things. One of the things that people need to understand, again, is this idea of the spiritual ecology. There are things that do not necessarily manifest physically in the same way that we do, right? In fact, we only manifest physically for a relatively short amount of time for, say, interrupted pulses in the eternity of our existence. So... So whether I live to be 80 or 90 or 100 or more, or, or more, 100 years is nothing compared to the eternity 
in which I'm not focused and Blend. pretending to be this. Yep. Yeah. Not every entity makes those choices, although sometimes they can and sometimes they, they can't, right? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. What I have, one of the most common things, but by the way, what you experience is not uncommon. It is not at all uncommon. Whoa. It happens quite often. Really? People don't talk about it, but it happens quite a lot. Quite a lot. Oh God, people will people will it. people will dismiss it. They say it's just a bad dream, just something that happened. Blah, blah, blah. Now, if you think about spiritual affliction as being some form of opportunistic infection, and by opportunistic infection, it means that these things are floating around all the time. Like there are viruses in the air all the time. There's bacteria in the air all the time right? But normally you have an immune system that protects you from getting a cold every five seconds, yeah? Right. Now, for example, in some cases like HIV and AIDS, you have an infective virus that diminishes your capacity to defend yourself. The AIDS virus works by actually killing off important cells that are part of your immune system. Okay, so the standing army that you have to defect yourself against infection is standing down. There's just no soldier, there's no soldiers around. So in those cases, infections that normally wouldn't happen can happen mm -hmm. because they're not being defeated because the, the police force is, is out of commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, universally, What happens in the cases of spiritual affliction is that there has been some sort of breach in our psych psychic and spiritual defenses. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Those defenses are on all the time. We can actually cultivate those defenses by raising our art vibration through meditation, through disciplined thought, positive thinking, all of those things in common parlance raise our vibration. The higher our vibration, the more the stronger our standing army of defenses. Makes sense. So, sometimes what happens? Spiritual aids. Sorry. But sometimes we get spiritual aids. Exactly. We can also have. We can also recruit higher consciousness. Uh, you can call them angels. You can call them guardian spirits. You can call them whatever you like. Who, can, who are like doctors or nurses, or even in some cases, spiritual um, personal trainers that can beef you up so that you don't get sick spiritually. Make sense? Yep. So what happens though, that these entities are around all the time, and most of the time we can ignore them if our vibration is higher. But if we have a, a lower vibration for whatever reason, they then see a breach in the wall, a gap in the armor, a chink in the armor, and they can go and they will go in and they will go in. If there is a if there is anything that they can exploit to get an entry point, they will go in. And the most common forms of entry points happen when people have experienced some sort of trauma that is unresolved. Mm. Now that trauma can happen as a result of a singular event, maybe a really bad accident because people weren't paying attention and all of a sudden really bad accident and then they have post-traumatic stress, dis stress disorder or it could happen for more commonly as a result of say childhood abuse neglect uh psychological mental physical sexual abuse got it that will leave a wound mm -hmm. and the person's more susceptible exactly there is a breach in the wall now there is a there is a hole in the defenses Mm -hmm. Unless that is treated and closed and healed in a variety of different ways that are available to people, then whatever is out there that wants to hurt you will get in. So what do you think what do you think it meant that it was my event and the thing didn't come inside of me? it went into my partner who was innocently sleeping. A, you 
can only experience something that you are in vibrational resonance with, correct? Got it. And so true of your partner at the time. Mm. You are you were involved in a relationship which is an ongoing co-creation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there would have been something in him, some gap that allowed something to get in and screw with him a bit sim while simultaneously screwing with you. Oh, I can't wait to send this to him. I'm going to be like, remember that weird ass shit that happened about 10 years ago? Here, Without knowing the details of your entire lives, I would say that at some point he had experienced some sort of trauma, which is like practically everybody experiences some sort of trauma but we heal, but sometimes we don't think, oh, it's just a small cut, it'll go away. But sometimes that's enough for something to get in. And if it's not as if he, it, he might not have invited it in. I mean, there are, there are cases where people invite possession, they invite contamination, they invite affliction for all sorts of screwed up reasons. Yeah. But in this case, Based on any or only based on what you're telling me, I would hazard a guess that what happened was that an entity decided to screw with him, but it was really a bit because he wasn't affected by it. You see, mm -hmm. whatever he had was just enough for the, the for that that entity to screw up a little bit, but did not breach the major defenses. But you at that point in your life were probably still had a whole bunch of wounds open that you had not dealt with or cleared? Oh yeah. I mean, at that time in my life, this was actually probably longer than 10 years ago. We were like, you know, we were traumatizing ourselves. We were partying and all kinds of craziness. So exactly. exactly. So what will, open. yeah, yeah, exactly. So you leave yourself really open to those sorts of spiritual infections. Yeah. And so basically it's, it, it sees your aura or what it, however it detects these things, it, it says, oh, I can have fun here. I don't even think either one of us had an aura at that point. It was just completely. You would, you would, you, you would, you would have because everything that is conscious has an aura, but the, but the, but the, but the aura would have been compromised. It would have any, in any case, it would have been vibrating in a way that was resonant with the, so you're doing this and it's doing that. And it says, ah, got it. Now I can grab you. Like a, I, it's like a no. spiritual AIDS handshake. Exactly. So it's, and it's just like a, the handshake in, a, in, in an internet pro, protocol. I, I, th this, this, this communication between us can't happen unless both our computers and the internet is vibrating at the same vibration. If the handshake doesn't work, we'd actually, we actually can't have a connection. We can't have this conversation. So this is why I'm saying if you're vibrating really, really quickly, but the other thing is vibrating slowly or or, or, or um, intermittently, or it's, it can't grab. It's just too fast. Away. You'll vibrate. You, it just can't grab a hold. And therefore, you won't be infected. But back then, you were probably wide open. Yeah. And unless you are actually doing something now to maintain your, a higher vibrational state through a, your ground state of consciousness, you'll still be vulnerable to these things. Well, I always wondered why I actually had my aura tested when I was in Egypt a couple of weeks ago. Dr. Oh, yeah. Shad had this amazing technology mm -hmm. and he, he, he can test how aligned your chakras are. Like it actually yep. shows how off they are. And That's then it, it tests your aura. And my aura was like, first of all, I was shocked. My chakras were almost totally aligned. I was like, what the hell? It was amazing how mm -hmm. close they were. I think there was one that was off just slightly. And then my aura was almost totally unpenetrated, solid all the way around. And I'm like, oh my God, I wonder how this has happened. But I don't have anything like that sleep paralysis anymore or even well, nightmares you, or any you, of that kind you, of stuff. You would there wouldn't be any reason that you would if if what you're saying is correct and your chakras are properly aligned in your energetic field the, and that just means that your that your energetic vibration is is at a point 
where these nasties just can't get in. They just can't. Yeah. They just can't vibrate at the same thing, at the same level, at the same level as you. So there's no entry. But you can imagine what it's like for somebody who's traumatized or who is on drugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That yeah. is going to be like, oh, all well, my Christmas, all my Christmases has come at once to whatever entity wants to exploit that. And remember, there's something really important about disease, whether it's spiritual or physical. Disease likes to maintain the environment necessary for it to thrive in. Mm, okay so what it'll do is that if trauma leaves a gap open and something comes in it will want to traumatize you more to bring to open up more gaps for more infestation you know what's amazing so about the cycle that? the cycle repeats itself and reinforces itself yeah that's i mean this is exactly in line with destructive pendulums and trans surfing right exactly, exactly. They, they, they they go to work and the intention is to keep you resonating at that level so it can continue to keep that channel of energy open, just bleeding you dry until either you're dead or you wake up to what's going on and try to take action in detaching. I mean, it's the exactly interesting what thing. The, thing do. the interesting thing about pendulums is that when they're just beginning, it actually takes a lot of energy to start a pendulum. But once it's going, you only need the slightest touch to keep it going, right? Mm. So a really well-developed pendulum is not only giving you a lot of it, is not, is like, it's, what's really interesting about the pendulum analogy, and it is only an analogy. People have to recognize that it's only like an analogy. Yes. It's not the way things actually are. But yeah, if you think about but if you think about it, I'm just looking for some object. Okay, here's, a, here's an object, right? If you think about this object, it's swinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? It's so it's similar to what happens with hypnosis. Yeah, totally. Pendulums hypnotize you yeah. into giving you their into giving into your giving them your attention, and you only and if it's a very well developed pendulum, it only needs a little bit of your attention to, to maintain its momentum. Yep. So, a dis but the idea of a, dis of a pendulum being destructive in and of itself might be, I think, a little bit oversimplistic because some pendulums just are, right? They will, of course, benefit from your attention, but whether or not they are destructive or, or constructive for you, for you depends on the way that you consciously interact with them. Yes, for sure. Hundred percent. You've got to. So, be, you've got. You've got. You've got to bring the other side to it. You know. Yes, exactly. It's a co-creation. So there's a difference between allowing yourself to be hypnotized into something that might be actually really beneficial for you, and allowing to yourself to be hypnotized to the point where you walk into the path of the uh, um, pendulum and it's like a wrecking ball that will just hit you and just blow you out of the water. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why. So, it's why. It's why Vadim Zeeland says in the book that pendulums are what makes dreams come true right and exactly. that and that statement in there kind of blows people away they're like what well i thought pendulums were bad yeah well, and this is a common misconception that, that the pendulums are bad pendulums aren't bad they just are yeah. whether they're bad depends on who you are and how you interact with them and whether they're bad for you in that moment the exactly. one pendulum that might be really bad for you at one stage of your life might be really beneficial at a later stage of your life but the money pendulum right there's a there's a very lively discussion at the moment about money and what it means etc but money is this huge pe pendulum but how you interact with it depends on how you what consciousness you bring to it the 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 analogy that i give in my course and when i talk about pendulums is like the media right the media for me is not good lowers my frequency lowers my thoughts doesn't really do anything for me just sucks my energy and my time but the media for an aspiring photojournalist is a completely different thing right yes. because the, because they're because they're trying to play a game they're playing the a game, game the game they're playing play. is photojournalist yes right? Photojournalist requires that that's a game. It has certain rule, well-established rules. You decide to play with that, that game or not. But the media is also what we're doing right now. We are creating media. 
this is not a negative media for either of us. We're both benefiting from our interactions with each other. Hopefully people watching this will get some benefit from our conversation. Yeah. The media, media in itself is not an evil thing, but what you bring to it, but what you bring to it, but I understand that mainstream media with its emphasis on horrible things happening all the time and people behaving atrociously towards each other uh, is going to bring you down oh, if yeah, you're yeah. if you if you are if you do not have a sense of detachment about it yes and you're the sort of person who who doesn't detach easily from that so you make a choice to say saying well understanding this of myself that i don't detach easily from these sorts of energies i prefer not to expose myself in the first place yeah and people can be out in the sun for a long time and all they'll get is a tan some people are out in the sun for 30 for three minutes and they'll get burnt to a crisp that is a perfect way of putting it and that actually and actually when you think about sunlight and stars i actually would prefer to use the term stars although it's never going to work because uh, because i understand why people would call them pendulums but if you think about stars they are pendulums they are energetic things that demand your attention they spit out energy but they'll gladly suck you into their gravity vortex and chew you up and turn you into more of itself as well but at the right distance they can warm you and they can bring life there close you go. enough yeah. and they'll free and they'll fry you to 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 pieces until there's nothing left of you it's about and they, and seeing if you're getting a burn and if you're getting a burn you got a dip you get exactly you got it you got to go you got to go away there is there pendulums are not like simple black and white things good or, or bad they are they are they are entities and some of them are conscious or some of them are pre-conscious they're just on the verge of being conscious yes either way you need to make a decision how you interact with these things you need to make a choice about how you are going to relate to these things. You drive it. You don't let it drive you. I don't know whether you can drive it. Because I, I can't drive the sun. No, but you can. But you can. You can step into the shade. I can drive my experience. Yes. That's and that's what I think is the core of transurfing. Transurfing is about driving your experience, becoming aware of the myriad options that are available that you are not necessarily about aware of becoming yeah. more aware of your options lets you have a, a greater number of tools with which you can interact with the space of variations so that you can then determine your experience more autonomously you have yeah. greater yeah. agency great way of putting it i should take that little clip and then if, when if somebody asks me what trans surfing is, I'll just shoot them over the link. There it is. It's That's as good a definition as any other. <laughs> so I, just a quick question before we move to the, the, the Facebook group questions. I don't think I've ever asked you, how'd you learn about trans surfing? You did ask me and I told you, I was watching um, Brian, Scott, and uh, you were on his show. Oh. And then I said, oh, that's interesting. And oh. so then I started watching some of your videos and I started commenting about, about them because I thought they were provocative and interesting. Uh, it was certainly Transurfing seemed to uh, have, have taken and synthesized ideas from all sorts of reality mod, mod, um, awakening modalities and come up with its own representation, presenting again ideas that had been around for ages but needed to be reset and retold for a new audience that otherwise would not be exposed to them. There's very, there's very little new in transurfing, but that doesn't matter because what's important is that it's being said in a way that resonates with a particular, with particular people so that they're brought to ideas and concepts and, and ways of looking at the world that they otherwise would not have been brought to. Got it. Yes, that's a good way of putting it. I like to say it's a new lexicon on old information. Yeah, exactly. It's a new lexicon yeah. on old information. And it will not be the last lexicon on old information that will be available. There will be something else 10, 20, 50 years from now that will speak to the people who are living then. 
yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Meanwhile, those people who are interested in transurfing are interested in basically one thing, and that is empowerment. Yeah. People come to transurfing because they feel that they don't have control over their lives or life is confusing or they are more a cause than an effect and they want to take more control and they want to have more power to do things, to, to build better lives for themselves. Well, you start by opening up your awareness to new ideas and to techniques and trying them out and seeing if they work. And if they work, great. It's your life is somewhat improved. Yeah. If your life is somewhat improved, great. Keep going until it stops improving when you need to find something else or work with new things, whatever. Yes. I love it. Well, let's get to the questions. Okay. Uh, I actually just, it was funny. Somebody asked this question when I put the Facebook post up that we were going to do a podcast. Somebody asked this next question. And then literally that day or the next day was a post by Vadim Zeeland on his Instagram feed answering this exact question. So I'll get your take and then I'll sort of, sort of regurgitate what I heard from Vadim's um, post and we'll, we'll kind of go at it like that. So sure. the, the person said, and I didn't write out exactly how they pitched the question, but more or less it's along the lines of, do we celebrate our successes or do we drop importance on them? Essentially asking is celebrating the small wins or the successes creating excess potential and should we drop importance or is it valuable to really savor those wins in the moment? So, so what do you think? Okay, well, we come back to, I have a problem with the whole importance term as a, I think it's a mistranslation. I've said that before. I think what Vadim Zealand is aiming for is something that would be better translated as Overinvestment. Yes. Uh, so what happens is lovely thing happens to you and you want to celebrate it. Great. There's nothing wrong with celebrating something. You're acknowledging something, you're enjoying it, you're having fun with it. Where it can go wrong is when you're putting to you're overinvesting in an outcome, or you're overinvesting, and as a result, that's coming from a place of fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because fear creates a vibration of agitation, of nervousness, of misalignment. Mm -hmm. You can be very aligned and very celebratory. Woohoo, way fun, fun. I'm getting it. I love it. I love it. I'm just enjoying this moment. Let me just enjoy my triumph. Yes. And then that energy runs its course and you feel great. Good. Now I can move on to the next thing. Or where it becomes like a, a more elaborate story about vindication, or it depends. It depends on what you're celebrating, of course. But what ultimately, what what we're trying to avoid when we're dropping importance is we're trying to avoid becoming misaligned through agitation, as which comes as a result of overinvesting and over yeah, and sorry. over making oh, something so that. much more important than it actually that that energy evaluation. that energy is incompatible with being able to smoothly surf into a new reality it's a bit like being on a surf we go back to the analogy of the surfboard in order to have a surf uh, in order to have a successful surf you need to have all these things in place. You need to have an ocean, you need to have waves, you need to have a beach, you need to have a surfboard, you need to have a body, you need to have coordination, mm -hmm. right? And you need to have an intent because you need to know exactly what you're doing and you need to have an understanding of the system as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. Let's move all that analogy over to the spiritual side of transurfing, right? What happens when you create too much importance, it's like standing on the surfboard and shaking because you're so excited about the fact that you're on the surfboard. Right? You're so excited, you're shaking. The next thing you do, you fall off your surfboard. Yes. And you start to go around and you're not actually surfing. When you have coordinated intention and when you are focused in the outer intention, actually on the waves, not about how you feel about them, 
you can consciously coordinate your body on that surfboard so that it is taking advantage of the movement of the waves because you understand the wind and the water and the waves and how they all interact and then you can move you can you can take advantage of all that huge energy that's at your disposal instead of just sitting on the surfboard which is what most people do trying to paddle their way everywhere yeah right mm -hmm. and surfing done properly is like surfing done properly you're allowing outer what they what in terms of is outer intention like the outer world and its energy and you're saying okay if i hit that wave right at that point yes now yeah. now i'm moving now i'm moving now i understand what i'm doing now i know what i'm doing now i'm going there i'm going there great and then you get to the end and then you get to the end of your run and you've got covered so much more into so much more distance and you've had you really had a great time and it's it's an it's exhilarating because you don't have to control the wave you don't yeah. have to control the ocean it's already doing stuff all you're doing is is timing the moment of interaction so that you interact in a specific way in order to get somewhere which is far further than you would ever gone to sitting in your surf paddling on your surfboard in the middle of the ocean trying to get somewhere yes it's such a good analogy it really is um and i think also too is you know developing a skill like surfing or whatever it really just it really just comes from understanding the different variables right learning to work with them and the variations of the environment and you and whatever it is that you're doing whatever you've decided to perfect hmm. and staying in resonance with the entire process and doing it enough times until you've sort of just carved out that little space in the alternative space and then you've perfected a craft absolutely and and i would say one thing that I would really like everybody watching this to understand. Trans surfing is a performance art. And just like any performance art, agitation, constriction, over putting, investing too much in something will kill it. Yeah. If I'm learning to sing, I need to understand breath, I need to understand diaphragm, I need to understand the flow of sound through my body. I need to understand music, I need to understand tone, I need to understand volume, I need to understand articulation and expression and all these things, right? And so what I do in the beginning is that I might make these little big uh, 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 sounds, but eventually as I understand myself more and I understand the nature of the art of singing, I will then relax into it to the point where suddenly, ah, right? Whereas <laughs> if I'm overly agitated, I'm on a stage and there's, a, and there's all of these there's people so watching me and I, oh, I've got this incredible importance about it and all of a sudden I find that my throat constricts yeah. and I can't do anything and I feel like a deer in the headlights, right? And you pee your pants on stage and you pee your pants on stage and nothing actually happens <laughs> right so trans surfing reality trans surfing is a performance art the great thing about it is that you can practice in the privacy of your own home and make all sorts of stumbles and mistakes and nobody will see and nobody you. will and nobody's watching and nobody cares and this is where you it's probably a really good idea to have a very good relationship with these conscious entities that we would call our higher self or our guardian spirits our guardian angels and say so, and and open ourselves up to these very positive influences these energetic consciousness and say guide me to a better practice of this art yes love it and then you if you open yourself up to that then you're able to accomplish more and you get better and better and better over time until one day you find yourself that you can sing for an hour and you're totally fine. Whereas before you were singing for five minutes and you were hoarse and nothing was happening and you were peeing your pants on stage. So I really want people to get the idea 
that trans surfing is a performance art. It's about performing into yourself into a reality that you prefer over the reality that you're currently in. So you want to hear Vadim's take on it? Please. Okay. So the, the, it was actually a question that was written in to him or the Transurfing Center in Russia or something yeah. like that. And it was all, it was in Russian and I had to press the translate button. So it was a little spotty on what I was reading, but the gist of it was this. The guy wrote in and said, I really, and th this will actually amaze you because we talked about this in a, in, in a, in a previous podcast. He said, um, the slide technique works, um, but only to a certain extent for me. I started my, my company, a bakery, highly successful at it, but now I'm agitated and I want to move on to my next goal. I've been trying to play the slide and do all the transurfing techniques to establish this new restaurant I want open and it just won't happen and i'm becoming really frustrated and angry at the situation and i don't know why i could transurf the bakery but i can't transurf the restaurant and essentially what the reply was is that the accomplishment of the bakery wasn't fully acknowledged or embraced like the guy was successful at it but rather than resonating with the success that he had created he decided to just like one up the situation and okay now I want a restaurant right and he didn't close that close that frame right close that um I can't remember how we how we worded it do you remember the backpack holding the backpack yes, yes. We close the circle. Close the circle, right? So he didn't close the circle because that frequency um, was that frequency was I don't want to say compromised, but there was he, he was resonating with the want and the desire, even if he accomplished it, right? He 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 still he needed to close that circle in order for him to take that frequency of success to move it on to the next goal okay so moving on to what i've just said trans reality transurfing is a performance art he performed a bakery mm -hmm. he he moved his consciousness into real into a reality from the space of variations where there now existed him interacting with a bakery that he had created mm -hmm. right obviously if you go into the deeper um the deeper theory of transurfing he didn't create anything he just moved into a reality mm -hmm. but that's beside the point the real important point is here he was able to create in himself a consciousness that was compatible with him being in the bakery mm -hmm. everything that we create that we create is like a child so he had given birth to this child and that child was unloved. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, was like, it was bringing it was like bring, bringing a child into the world and saying, "You're not quite what I want in a kid, but you'll do." And <laughs> I'm going to you and I'm going to set you out to work to earn money so I can fund the next kid. <laughs> Which, if I were the bakery, I'd be like, "Yeah, I know, right?" right? It's like. Come on, huh? man. I mean, hello, because the bakery is a conscious thing in and in of itself. It's a living interaction between him, the people that he works with, the environment, the customers that come in and all that sort of stuff. Gratitude. Right? It's basic. Yeah. Gratitude. Well, even just even basic acknowledgement would be nice. <laughs> Forget gratitude, but just yeah. acknowledge that. I'm, I mean, I'm speaking as the bakery here, right? And it's a good thing yeah. I'm dressed in white. Right? So speaking speaking as the bakery here right i came into the world because you asked me to i've done my work i've done my job i work i do good things people are fed people are happy and you're saying eh, i don't like the bakery 
I want the restaurant because the restaurant is a better reality than you. Screw yeah. you, hippie. Well, yeah. And it's so true. It is exact. It is so true that the restaurant will 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 fall to the exact same fate as the bakery. Yes, because nothing's ever good enough. Nothing's ever good enough. And this is where, and this is where personally, my relationship with money, my relationship with my professional realm and success and all that stuff has tr completely transformed. I did this amazing thing for the first time in my life. I don't know how I even gained this insight, but a few years ago, I decided that I was going to quantify in numbers what success meant to me. What is okay. personal success in this moment? Now it changes from time to time, right? Sure. I'm like, sure. okay, I want this much money in the bank. Yes. I want this much paid off on a house I own. I yes. want no debt. I want my car paid for. I want yes. this amount of assets in my businesses. I want, and I actually sat down, not what society tells me is the right numbers. I sat down and thought about it. What do I actually want? In doing that, this amazing thing started to happen for me. When I was achieving that number, let's say the dollar amount in the bank, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, it's working. There, I'm, I'm halfway, I'm 75%, I'm 100%. Oh my God, this is awesome. I actually, for the first time in my life, feel cool, right? Like mm -hmm. I've, like I made the, I created the bakery and I am happy with it rather than going, okay, well, I just want more now. Oh, it's just some more, just a little bit more. <laughs> just a little bit more and a little bit and more. Then, and this is, and this comes back to this whole conversation that's going on about money on on the um on facebook at the moment yeah. it's there, there are all these different points of view but they all really boil down to money is a pendulum understand how it works if if you're not getting it into your life you're not understanding something about the way that money works a and you don't understand about how you work in relationship to money and yeah. you might have to deal with issues about self-esteem um, value, worth, all that, that's true, but you might also have yeah, to understand yeah. what money is. The system, just understand what the system, understand the pendulum, understand the ocean. There is a money ocean. It works, it comes to people who do particular things in particular ways. It comes, it doesn't come to people who do other things in other ways. It's yeah. cert, you can certainly be a completely screwed up mess and have no self-worth at all and make a ton of money. Yeah. Right, because the relationship isn't direct or linear. Yeah. There, are, there are people in the world, like, for example, the per, one of the people I write about in my book, whose business was going gang, gangbusters, huge amount of money going in. He was a wreck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a complete wreck. But yeah. the money machine was working because he had set up the money machine and it worked. Yes. Right? Independently of how he felt about himself, he felt like a worthless piece of crap throughout this entire stuff, even though the money machine was working. So it doesn't mean that it was reality before transurfing. This is it. Well, this was my case that I, I set up my money machine and it was working, but then, but then my mind didn't acknowledge the wins. So coming back to the, the actual question, I didn't acknowledge those successes. I didn't acknowledge those profits. I didn't, because my brain was just stuck on the more, 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 give me more. And, you, and, more, and, and, more. and, and more is okay, but it's not it's it's only okay yeah the, at what point because if you have there's a difference between more that's coming from a place of fear and agitation and anxiety and more out of a sense of and more that's coming out of a sense of elation and that's when you come back to this celebration thing or it's all related it, it's all related if you're coming out of more because you're coming from a place of lack you're actually coming from more from a poverty mentality no much no matter how much money is in the bank Oh, yeah, that was exactly what I experienced. 100%. Exactly. Right. So, but, and this is what a lot of other people experience. And there are other people who were coming from more that I really acknowledge you, bakery. I think that you're a great bakery. I really love you. I'm, I'm so happy that this is working. Now, bakery, can you and I co create a restaurant together? 
Sure, says the bakery. Why yes. not? Let's 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 see let's see how far we can take this thing. A partnership, you and I, Dad, you and I, Mum, Mummy, whatever. Yeah, I don't, dis I don't dis I don't I don't disown any of the books I've ever written. I appreciate yeah. each one that I ever uh, that I've ever written on the pain point that that's where I was at the time. That's what I was capable of expressing. Thank you. You took me to the next yes. step. I don't. I haven't disowned anything that I've ever written. Yeah. Why would I? Why would I? Some things are better written than others. Some subjects are more interesting than others. But at the end of the day, each one played their role, and I'm happy that they played it. But that's what anybody. That's an attitude that I would invite anybody to, to have. Whatever they're creating, whether it's a business, an art piece, relationships. People go from relationship to relationship, thinking that they're always going to get the be a, a better person, a better person. And they don't even look at themselves, wondering whether they're a better person, whether they're a better person, whether they've created themselves to a point where they can not only um, uh, attract, and I always put this in, a, in inverted commas because I don't believe that's what actually happens, but attract somebody into their lives that will affirm them and make their lives beautiful, more beautiful than they already are. Getting back to our to say, original to be able to conversation. <laughs> Sorry? Getting back to our original conversation, you could not be attracting somebody, you could have a, a, a chink in your armor and you're being invaded by some foreign, foreign host. Exactly, exactly. You, you have to be able to sustain, anybody can, it, Look, it doesn't take a great deal of intelligence to make a baby, right? It oh, doesn't. It does it's, I mean, making a baby, for example, is the result of a pen, the life pendulum that's been going on in this planet for 4,000 million years. It's the number right? one pendulum of all it's like, it's, a, it, it like, it's like it's a done deal, right? Yeah. It's not very difficult. What is hard is taking that baby and turning that and creating an environment in which that that, that the potential in that person can grow into something wonderful. That's an art that very few people know how to do very well. <laughs> and in the absence of great parenting, we then have to parent ourselves and then we have to become our own parents and become the best possible version of ourselves in the process so that we can not only bring, and like it doesn't take much to bring in a person into your life oh. what it, but but what does take a lot of work is becoming the sort of person that can that is capable of receiving the gifts of the other and who is also capable of of giving gifts to the other so yeah. that you both grow from the experience or you both enjoy the experience so that you are both better people greater than the sum of the, their parts while also becoming greater parts in the process that's yeah, an that's art too it. that's yeah. an art too it's an art, so, that, it's an art that not many have mastered i think exactly and all <laughs> that and all the transurfing does is, is provide a number of tools that it, that can in some cases help some people create the artwork of their lives yes yeah, it's a great way of putting it. But but you don't. But I would I would counsel against fetishizing transurfing, turning it into something that is in a. It would be like buying a whole bunch of paints and brushes and canvases and spending all day ga gazing at the paints and brushes and canvases and say, "Ooh, they're such cool paints. They're such cool brushes. Such cool canvases." And never actually painting anything. I think yeah, that's, that's a real and true. that's a real and that's a real danger in transurfing or any modality or oh, any yes. thought, the, thought any 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 process any process because yeah. people can get fall, fall in love with the ideas while not actually doing anything with them yeah like, oh that's so cool well yes it is cool now try it and see it. And apply it to a real thing and you might actually find that you in the beginning you paint really badly yes but it but, but that's not yeah. a reflection but that's not a reflection on the brushes or the yeah. canvas or the paint it's a reflection on the way you're interacting with them because you haven't because you haven't mastered your tools and also even if you master your tools you still have to have a vision you still have to have an idea of what you want to paint what you want to bring into the world yes 
totally. In the, absence, in the absence of that, you could just be very good, a very good technician whose art, while technically very accomplished, is still dead because it doesn't do what art really needs to do, which is to communicate and to create an experience for another. That's a good way of putting it. It's getting back to what you were saying about trans surfing being a performance art. You know, like I've said, and this is actually my motto on the official trans surfing commercial that knowledge without application is merely entertainment, you know, and it is, exactly. it is so, so, so true. Well, we are almost out of time, Xavier. It's 412 my time and I Ooh. think can you, can, you feel your, can you feel yourself fading? Really? I feel myself getting sleepy. I don't know why I'm so tired today, but I'm uh, pretty soon I'm going to be close to a, a, a uh, mannequin. Okay, well then in that case, let's round it off. This has been very entertaining. We haven't actually answered many of the other questions that happened. So no, we still that. have two, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, and then I have a few questions that have come in to me privately. So I'm going to add them to this and then let's do another one of these. Okay, not a problem. Have to meet, meet to chew off the bone next time. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure. It's, it's also very uh, nice to see you again in your... Um, Gr gr grass blades you look like a caterpillar um having a party <laughs> it's the butterfly ball well it's nice to see you thank you everybody for watching um if you have any questions that you would like us to talk about the next time we decide to do this send them uh to me it's a messenger through facebook or email them everything's down below in the links and we will we will go at it with whatever the uh, whatever the questions are, topics du jour of that day. And yes, please send them in to us. We love questions. So thank you so much, everybody, and thank you, Xavier, for your time. And I look forward to doing this again with you. Take care. Bye. Bye.